In Britain, it was the era of Margaret Thatcher and monetarism, compact discs and dire straits, Bob Geldof and Live Aid. We'd never had it so good all over again, and to prove it, the car industry was in the throes of massive expansion. The ferocity of competition for sales matched only by the intensity of competition in sport, as the makers struggled to show each other who was boss. For rally fans, it was a golden era when battle for the championship became as intense and technical and more expensive than the hunt for the Formula One crown. First real evidence of this came in the squat, brutal shape of the Audi Quattro, bringing a turbocharger and technology learnt from Jeeps into the rally championship in a car destined to be the first ever four-wheel drive rally winner in 1981. It was up against traditional opposition in the shape of the 250 horsepower Opel Ascona. Even the newcomers like Toyota Celica were traditional designs. Groups 1 to 9 were scheduled to die in 82, seeing the end of things like the Talbot Lotus that took the maker's title in 81 and the Chevette, which Russell Brooks was using to good effect. In the 80s, everything was scheduled to change. The Ascona had been around since the mid-70s and remained competitive until the arrival of the new breed of cars, as groups 1 to 9 were replaced by A, B and N. 1982 was the year of the Quattro, bristling with new technology, including aluminium and Kevlar panels, a five-cylinder engine, turbocharger and a four-wheel drive system culled from a military Jeep produced by Volkswagen. 200 pounds heavier than anything else, it was backed by rallying's first proper war machine, provoking all the jokes about Panzers and Blitzkrieg. And it was by no means a perfect rally car. Nose heavy with serious understeer and a significant turbo lag, it also had a solid driveline with no centre diff. It was a pig to drive. <laughs> 